Luke chapter number 4, we begin reading verse 16. The Bible says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, make a note of that, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. That ought to be our custom on the Lord's day to be in the house of God. He said, And he stood up for to read. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty uh, them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, for Lord for all we've enjoyed thus far in the service. Thank you for the good singing. God, thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for hearing and answering prayer. Thank you, Lord, for always being in control. Thank you for being a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Thank you, Father, for the promise that you'd never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, that, Lord, you'd be with us always, even unto the end of the world. Uh, God, we just bless you and praise you for being a great God uh, and for being our God. Uh, now, Father, I pray that, Lord, you'd bless the reading of the Word of God. Uh, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, tonight to continue to set in heavenly places. Uh, Lord, speak to our hearts, encourage us, uh, strengthen us for the week that lies ahead. Uh, God, we certainly do pray for those that are working with the children on the other side. Uh, thank you for those folks that are faithful to give their Sunday night service uh, uh, to be a blessing and be a help to those children. Uh, Father, thank you for all those young people we've seen saved in the last year or so. Uh, God, I pray if there's any over there tonight unsaved, uh, the Word of God be hid in their heart. And Lord, uh, we'd see them trust Christ uh, at a young age. I thank you for those that are working with the teens. Uh, God, I pray you'd bless those efforts. Uh, all the peer pressure and all the things our young people face in school uh, as we've already heard here tonight. Uh, I pray you'd insulate them and you'd undergird them and God, you'd put a hedge about them and God, you'd bless those young people uh, for their desire to be in the house of God. Uh, now, Father, uh, help us tonight. Uh, bless your people. Uh, we'll not fail to bless you and thank you for it for it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we ask it all. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. Uh, Notice, first of all, Jesus is in the synagogue. Uh, where else would you expect to find him? Uh, he's at the house of God. Uh, hey, I'm glad he was here when we got here tonight. Uh, hey, what a blessing. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and Jesus, uh, when he walked on the earth, uh, he is being our example. Uh, he is showing us how we ought to live our lives. Uh, uh, we have no excuse uh, unless we're providentially hindered uh, not to find ourselves in the Lord's house. Uh, hey, uh, where better to be than to come amongst God's people uh, and to sing praise unto God uh, and to worship Him and reverence Him and adore Him uh, and to hear from Him how to conduct our lives. Uh, we find Jesus uh, in the synagogue. Uh, notice also that Jesus is using the Scriptures. He didn't have a drama play. He didn't have uh, 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 some uh, stool brought out before him where he could sit and talk and give you some psychology for your life. Uh, notice he's using the Scriptures. Look again at verse 17. Uh, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Uh, when he had opened the book, uh, he found the place where it was written, uh, uh, and he begins to preach unto them from the Scriptures. Thank the Lord. For the scriptures. Uh, listen, y'all can vote me out tonight, but as long as I'm pastor here, then we're going to preach and teach the Word of God. Uh, hey, uh, God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. Uh, hey, unto the, uh, 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 the lost, uh, it's foolishness, but unto us that believe, uh, it's the power of God unto salvation. Uh, hey, the Word of God. Uh, so then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Uh, it's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Uh, hey, uh, outside the Lord Jesus, your Bible's your best friend in this world. Uh, It'll help you, friend. Uh, thank God for the Scriptures. Mm -mm. I was talking to Brother Sidney Weaver. He'll be with us, Lord willing, on a Sunday in February. 
We was talking this week, uh, and Brother Sidney uh, is one of the greatest Bible preachers uh, uh, that's walking around in shoe leather. I do not say that uh, 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 facetiously. Uh, Brother Sidney and I was talking, uh, and he reminded me something I told him 10 years ago. Of course, he don't give me credit for it because he goes around the country making a statement uh, and takes credit for it himself. Uh, 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 but I told him 10 years ago, uh, 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 every camp meeting I go to, every meeting I'm in, everywhere I'm at, uh, I hear a lot of so-called preaching, uh, but I don't hear a lot of Bible preaching. Uh, I told him most preaching uh, that is done behind independent Baptist pulpits uh, is less than 50 years old. Uh, I, I can read everything Jesus preached. Uh, I can read everything Paul preached. Uh, I can read what Peter preached. Uh, hey, uh, I've got Spurgeon's library. I can read what Spurgeon preached. Uh, I can read what D.L. Moody preached. Uh, uh, but we've raised up a generation uh, that are interested in tickling ears uh, and making it comfortable for folks. Uh, Paul said, preach the word. Uh, be instant in season, out of season. Uh, thank God for the scriptures uh, and the preaching of thereof. Uh, we see him using the scriptures. We see him in the synagogue. But Jesus makes a statement. Look what he said in verse 21. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Jesus makes a statement. He says, uh, suck it up, buttercup. This day's upon you. He's saying, I'm him that the Bible said was going to come and do these things. Hmm? Uh, today's your day, is what he told them. Uh, can I say, today's our day to be seated in heavenly places. And if you've been plugged in around here today, you've been set in heavenly places. But then notice Jesus under scrutiny. Look in verse number 20. It said, and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. Now look here. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasted on him. Fastened on him. Look at verse 22. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? He just told him. he said, I'm him that's come to preach these things. And they're saying, isn't this Joseph's son? Now right after that in my Bible, I wrote down, no, he's God's son. Yeah. Mm. Wasn't Joseph's son. Uh, Joseph was blessed of God to be a stepfather uh, I, I, and to provide for him, uh, even though Jesus owned the cattle on a thousand hills. Uh, 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 but listen, uh, do you remember when uh, uh, Mary and Joseph had come to the feast there at Jerusalem uh, and then they left uh, and they got a day's journey before they realized Jesus wasn't with them uh, and Jesus is about 12 years old. What sorry parents leaves their kids for a whole day uh, without even knowing about it? Uh, and where did they find Jesus? Uh, in the synagogue. Uh, and what was Jesus doing? Uh, dumbfounding the scholars of his day. Uh, and Mary said, your father and I uh, were worried about you. He said, I'm about my father's business. Uh, he rebuked his mother and said, Joseph is not my father. Uh, I came from the Lord. Hey, uh, how sad it is that Mary let life get in the way that she forgot where he came from. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They begin to say, is this not Jesus' son? Mm -mm. Now notice something. This crowd here today had the greatest opportunity. There could have been a revival start in Israel at this little synagogue in Nazareth that the world would still be talking about. They had the greatest opportunity. Can I say this? They had the greatest preacher there's ever been. They had the, the living word right in front of them. Had the greatest opportunity. Had the greatest uh, 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 preacher. Uh, and in the next uh, few verses, they get the greatest sermon subject that you could ever have. I'm interested tonight in where they said in verse number 22, and all bear witness, bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. I want to preach on, uh, on this little thought just for a minute. On his gracious words. 
Uh, Brother Bob just sang about it. That woman at the well came in the middle of the afternoon because she had a wicked life. She had a ruined life. Uh, she couldn't come in the morning when the other women drew uh, water. Uh, she was an outcast. Uh, and when she showed up, there he was. Uh, he didn't uh, uh, tell her she was sorry, no good, had no right. Uh, no, he just showed her love. Uh, and he changed her life. Uh, and she went in the city and told the whole city, come see a man uh, that told me everything I ever did. Is this not the Christ? Uh, hey, uh, when they brought that woman caught in the act of idolatry, uh, adultery uh, uh, by the law, she should have been stoned. Uh, but hey, uh, he just got down and wrote in the sand. Uh, I believe he wrote the sin of all those men around her in the sand. Uh, when he looked up, they were gone. What a blessing he showed love. Hey, I'm glad God's a gracious God. I'm glad he's a merciful God. I'm glad he don't give us what we deserve. I'm glad he's better to me than I am to him. I bless his holy name. Got to thinking about that word gracious. That word gracious means having or showing kindness. It means having or showing courtesy. It means having or showing charm or compassion. Can I say that word means indulgent or polite to inferiors? He is so far above us, but He makes us feel so comfortable around Him. Uh, he is so beyond who we are. He's holy. Uh, he's altogether lovely. Uh, He's the Lord of all, uh, but He makes us feel uh, right at home in His presence. He's so gracious. And I got to thinking about grace. Grace is the unmerited love and favor of God toward man. And what they're about to hear, uh, the greatest subject matter of any sermon, uh, He begins to preach to them about grace. Uh, Hey, who more to know about grace than the gracious one? Uh, and he begins to expound upon them about God's grace. Uh, hey, uh, we ought to get beside ourselves, uh, realize that we ought to be in hell tonight. Uh, but I'm not going. Uh, why? Because of the grace of God. Uh, I couldn't earn it. Uh, I don't deserve it. Uh, but he gave it to me anyway. Uh, he can't help it. He's just that way. Uh, can I say, it's grace that puts us in the way. It's grace that helps us along the way. And it's grace uh, that will take us all the way. Thank God for grace. Uh, oh, I bless his holy name. Uh, let me give you these three points. We'll go to the house. I want you to notice in this chapter that grace is proclaimed. Look again at verse number 18. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Can I say, uh, he's talking about folks that can't help themselves. Uh, he's talking about folks whose lives are a mess. Uh, and he comes to bring grace. Uh, he comes to help them in their lowest state. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, the me method he's going to use uh, is the preaching of the gospel. Uh, hey, there's no one going to get to heaven without the preaching of the gospel. Uh, the good news uh, that Jesus came... Uh, and he died, was buried, and rose again. Uh, and the good news is you don't have to die in your sins. Uh, there's grace available for you tonight. Uh, can I say through the preaching of the gospel, uh, we find uh, the preaching of the gospel to the base ones. Uh, he said he came to preach uh, uh, the gospel to the poor, uh, those that don't have anything, uh, those that couldn't muster up enough to uh, uh, be worth anything. Uh, those that couldn't earn their way anywhere. Uh, uh, listen, uh, aren't you glad God saves poor folks? Uh, aren't you glad He came uh, uh, to the folks from the other side of the track? Uh, 
I'm looking around. I don't think there's any blue bloods in here. I don't think anybody was born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Most of you have had to pull yourself up from your own bootstraps. Most of you are what you are by the grace of God. But aren't you glad? Hallelujah. It's not about how much money you got in your pocket. It's not about your pedigree. It's not about the address where you live. It's about what Jesus can do for you. Aren't you glad? He came to preach to the base ones. Can I say this? Not only he did he preach to the base ones, he preaches to the brokenhearted. Mm. I read a statistic several years ago that the unchurched world, those that don't go to church, uh, those that live across the street from you or down the street from you, those that on Sunday morning when you're on your way to church are out mowing their grass or raking their leaves or doing something other than church things. Most of the unchurched world won't consider going to church or get involved in church until a tragedy's happened in their life. And then they say the church that they usually go to is the one uh, that has either been there the most uh, or the one that uh, uh, they identify with the most because they know somebody that goes there. Can I say, mm, those that have broken hearts, God has a word of grace for. Huh? Can I say this? Uh, he also came to those uh, that were held captive, those in bondage. We preached on being in bondage a little bit today. Uh, I'm glad I got captivated by Jesus one day, though. Uh, hey, came to the blind. By the way, uh, 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 that verse in Isaiah uh, uh, said that only God uh, uh, could open up blinded eyes. Uh, why do you think there's Bartimaeus in the Bible? Uh, why do you think there's a couple other occasions uh, where blind men receive their sight? Uh, uh, it was just another uh, sign to Israel uh, that he had come uh, and that he was on the scene, uh, that it was his acceptable year. And I say, there's a lot of people that can see naturally, but they're blind spiritually. But the gospel opened up blinded eyes. And he came to the bruised. And then what it said? And to set at liberty them that are bruised. I say this often. One of these days it's going to sink in. You never know the hurt behind the smiles that people wear when they come to church. Now I'm privy to know things that you don't know. You don't know how many people that walk through them doors every Sunday and they've been bruised. Some have been bruised by family members. Some have been bruised uh, by people in, in the community. Some have been bruised, uh, my dear friends, from church folk. There are people that have been bruised. They've been hurt. Can I say there are some that have been hurt physically, but usually the ones that have the hardest times are those that have been, bu have been bruised mentally. And they, they constantly live with that and they deal with that. Uh, and when they come to the house of God, they don't need cut on. Uh, they don't need chewed up and spit out. Uh, they need grace. Uh, they need some help. Uh, they need to hear those gracious words of the Lord uh, uh, that will help them in their condition. Uh, can I say, we find that grace is proclaimed in verse number 18. And friend, wherever you are in life, He has grace for you. Mm. Uh, we not only see grace proclaimed in this chapter I also find grace is illustrated in this chapter look in verse 25 verse 25 he says but I tell you of a truth many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias when the heaven was shut up three years and six months when great famine was throughout all the land but unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto uh, Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And then in verse 27 he says, And many lepers were in Israel at the time of Eliseus the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. Now we find grace is illustrated. Now, can I say... We know that when the brook dried up, that God sent Elisha, or Elijah down there to the widow. She was going to make a cake for her and her son. They were going to eat it and die. That's all they had. 
And the man of God shows up and says, make me a cake first. Isn't that like a preacher? You take care of me and God's going to take care of you. Huh? That is Joel Osteen preaching right there if I've ever heard it. Uh, you plant a seed and God's going to give you $10,000. Huh? No, he was trying to get her to exercise her faith. So she was obedient to God's man. She made him a cake. But then every time she went back to that meal barrel, she'd reach down in and there. She'd empty it out, make a cake. She'd squeeze out that cruise of oil and have oil. But the next time she needed meal, it was there. Next time she needed oil, it was there. Uh, God sustained her and sustained her and sustained her. Uh, uh, guys, that's just the way God does it. Uh, sometimes uh, He'll let you see way down the road. Uh, but most of the time, Brother Clayton, in my Christian life, uh, I see where He just has us do it one step at a time. Uh, one step of faith at a time. Uh, and God makes a way. Uh, and God provides. Uh, and God takes care of things. Uh, and God met the needs of that widow lady. Uh, can I say uh, the same thing uh, 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 about Naaman? Uh, 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 he had a little widow, uh, uh, I mean that little maid that was from Israel. Uh, she said, would to God you get down there to the man of God? Uh, 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 because the man of God down there, he'd heal you of your leprosy. Uh, now leprosy is always a type of sin. Uh, there was no cure for leprosy, and there's no cure for sin. Uh, uh, but there was a cleansing for leprosy. And bless the Lord, there's a cleansing from sin. Uh, hey, uh, if God showed you grace, uh, and you got cleansed from your leprosy, you'd have to go to the priest, uh, and through a, a, a service with the priest, uh, he could proclaim you uh, cleansed from your leprosy. We find Naaman went down there. Didn't happen the first time he dipped. Didn't happen the second time. But when he did exactly what the man of God said, by the way, he got mad. He didn't want to go down to Jordan. It was a nasty river. He wanted to go somewhere nice. God don't care about your perspective on anything. If you're going to get help from God, you better do it God's way. And hey, when he submitted to it, uh, and he dipped, uh, when he come up that seventh time, his flesh was as a newborn babe. Uh, mm. Now listen, Jesus is giving the illustration of grace. He's saying there were many widows and many lepers, but only one got help in each situation. Now can I just do a little sidebar right here? Mm, he's not saying that there were two elected above everybody else. If you didn't get that, Jesus wasn't a Calvinist. All the widows and all the lepers could have got help had they wanted help. But what Jesus was showing, that they were helpless and they were hopeless. But when they did what the man of God told them to do, they got what they needed. They got grace. And can I say, uh, you and I, yeah. Uh, we're here tonight, and I hope you're saved. Believe most of you saved. Uh, hope everybody's saved. Uh, if you're saved, uh, it's not because Jesus elected you above lost people. Uh, it's because you listened to the man of God, uh, and you did exactly what God said to do, uh, and you experienced the grace. You, you're saved by grace through faith. Uh, hey, what a blessing. Uh, they all can get grace, uh, but they have to do it God's way. We see grace is illustrated. Grace is proclaimed. But notice the reality of much of what grace faces. Notice grace is rejected. Look in verse 28. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were excited, shouted, Hey man, hallelujah, and had a time. No. No. They were filled with wrath. Rose up and thrust him out of the city. Led him down to the brow of the hill whereon the city was built that they might cast him down headlong. But he passing through the midst of them went his way. By the way, he's only God. He was looking for another hill, not that hill. Uh, and they heard what he had to say, they were filled with wrath. And they was wanting to do him in. Do you know how many of God's men have stood up, proclaimed grace to people, and people get mad? 
How many times God's people show grace to somebody and they get mad? I mean, the only thing this church is here for is to help people. We're to help the lost get to Jesus. We're to help the backslid, those have the will of God, to get back to Jesus. We're to help the folks that are faithful to stay with Jesus. Everything this church stands for is for the Word of God, which is designed to help people. God came to us in our lowest state. And He gave us the most precious thing this world has, the Word of God, so we can know the ways of God. And that's what this church is all about, proclaiming the Word and will of God for every man. And can I say there are a lot of people, they get mad. Now, can I say if that crowd there would have understood that Jesus was for them and not against them, if that crowd there would have been willing to put their tradition away and listen to what He said, Oh, he would help them. But you see, they love tradition and they love themselves more than the thought of being saved from themselves. I told you the other day, the middle letter of pride is I. They were filled with wrath because they were full of pride. They didn't want to be told what to do. And I say, anybody that gets mad at preaching, it's because they themselves is the Lord of their lives and they will not do what God tells them to do. He came to give them gracious words. They even admitted they were gracious words. And He came and proclaimed grace. And that wasn't good enough. Friend, if grace isn't good enough, I don't know what can help you. Because what we all need is God's matchless grace in our life. Thank God for saving grace. Thank God for sustaining grace. Huh? Thank God for supplying grace. He supplies every need. And hallelujah, one of these days, thank God for separating grace when He's going to give us dying grace and take us out of here. huh? It's always been about grace. Tonight, when's the last time you really thanked Him for His grace? When's the last time He treated you, you thanked Him for treating you like an equal and not, a, and not Him being a superior? When's the last time you thanked Him that he's been far better to you than you deserve. Huh? He's a good God. And he always has gracious words for you and I. Never, ever take for granted the grace that has been demonstrated to you and I. Let's all stand tonight. Maybe you need to come tell him you love him. Maybe you need to come tell him thank you. Maybe God's used somebody to show you grace. Maybe you want to put your arms around them and thank them for being a blessing to you. Maybe he spoke to you about something else. You just mind the Lord in during this invitation. So Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. As they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. Thank you for the Word of God, the gracious words of God. Lord, thank you for being so good to us. Thank you, Lord, for the times you put up with us. Lord, the long-suffering you show us even since we've been saved. Lord, thank you for winking at our ignorance so many times. God, thank you for being so gracious. Now, Lord, there may be somebody here tonight, a stranger to the grace of God. Lord, if that's the case, please deal with them about their sin. God, that we might see them birthed into the family of God. God, those that are saved, God, help them to live in light of the grace of God. And God, help them to share you with a lost and dying world. God, somebody might need some special help here tonight. They might be real low, real struggling, really with something great in their life. God, maybe you just need to send one of your vessels by their way to encourage them. God, whatever's needed in this invitation, God, you, you, you do the leading. And give us the grace and strength to be obedient. Have your will and way. And Father, we'll thank you for it. Thank you again for the good grace of God. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.